it's obvious to all of us that, um, at least in my opinion, I think you would agree, that there are two people in this club that are the pillars of this club. And they are Joe Exum and Jerry Smith, who always sit at this table over here. And as, as most of you know, because he's been talking about it for weeks, one of them's having a birthday, and that's Jerry Smith. <laughs> so, Jerry, I'd like you to, if you would, come up here. Get that old knee working. We could do a little do 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 do. I thought I was saying. Jerry, it's a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if you have eyes behind your head. You see that table full of some friends back there. Wave, friends. Oh, I wonder what they're doing there. Well, <laughs> and look back there, Jerry. Uh -huh. oh, wow. <laughs> I know. Well, I knew I was going to need to get the Kleenex out, and it was going to be this quick. But anyway, so Jerry, there, <laughs> you always have a clean handkerchief. So Jerry, um, they're all here to wish you a happy birthday and to sing with us "Happy Birthday to You." Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jerry. Happy birthday to you. Y'all can't follow directions at all. Golly, Bill, what a crowd. So, Jerry, this is a surprise to you. Oh, we're going to do that? Another surprise. <laughs> that in the script? <laughs> Jerry? <laughs> Jerry, Andrew put these candles in the form of a J. Oh, I thought that was so cute. Don't you blow yet. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lauren says, we may now blow them out. Make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> Not last one, but next year. I'll, I'll be 90. So, Jerry, this is a surprise, is it not? Well, I have another surprise for you. You ever heard that show, This Is Your Life? This is Your Life, America's most talked about program. Jerry, this is your life. So I want to welcome all of Jerry's family and uh, the employees of uh, George A. Smith Funeral Home. And uh, if y'all, you're going through the line, just we're going to start the program. Just feel free to come on up and eat. Um, so first of all, I'd like to call up Mayor Conger for a special presentation.
Jerry, happy birthday again, and uh, so honored to be here and so honored to know you and your family uh, my whole life. And uh, like Smith and the Congress, we're just basically family ourselves, so uh, glad to be able to do this today. And so I know that most of us in here, I know you especially feel like every day is Jerry Smith Day, but uh, I have a proclamation today. It says, whereas William Jerry Smith, was born in Jackson, Tennessee, alongside his twin brother, Jack Arthur Smith, on November 1st, 1934. And attended Jackson City Schools, Memphis State University, University of Tennessee, and Lambeth College. Whereas Jerry was married to the love of his life, <clears throat> Miss Ruth Ann Barker Smith, for 68 years, is the father of four children, has 11 grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. Whereas Jerry is a lifetime member of the Jackson Rotary Club, where he rules the table of wisdom, <laughs> and Jerry's Brag Jar. He's an active member of First United Methodist Church. He's past president of the Jackson Chamber of Commerce, was a member of the Jackson JCs, and served on numerous committees and boards. Whereas Jerry, Jerry formerly owned and managed George A. Smith and Sons Funeral Home, Maplewood and Laurelwood Nursing Homes, Island Memorial Gardens, and developed three successful real estate developments. Whereas Jerry was instrumental in fostering the development of cable TV and cellular telephone services in Jackson, Tennessee. Whereas Jerry gives tirelessly of his time, energizes energies and resources to make Jackson, Madison County, Tennessee a better place for everyone. So now therefore, we, A.J. Massey, Mayor of Madison County, Tennessee, Scott Conger, Mayor of the City of Jackson, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 1st, 2023, as William Jerry Smith Day. Thank you, Mayor. Now I'd like to call on Frank McMean for a special presentation. Roger, I need your assistance here. Today we recognize one of our finest with the highest honor bestowed upon a Rotarian. Today this club has chosen to honor Jerry Smith as a Paul Harris Fellow. Jerry, you are loved and respected by all. In October, your industry recognized you with a Lifetime Achievement Award. We were very proud of you on that day. Jerry Smith has been a Rotary Club member since November the 1st, 1987. So this is his Rotary birthday as well as his time for celebrating of your birthday. And uh, you have probably been a Rotarian as long as some of us, some of us have been members. A little, little humor, very little. For decades, you and others have occupied the table known as the Wisdom Table, and you have um, been very selective about those you allow to sit with you. <laughs> That's right. The admission standards have been very high, and Joe and you do control that table. Jerry, as a Paul Harris Fellow, you will join more than one million people who have been honored with this, with this award since 1957 the highest honor that a Rotarian can receive. Jerry, here's a pen for you to wear proudly as a member of this elite group of Rotarians. <clears throat> you'll have a certificate and you'll be wearing this medallion um, to show others of your commitment uh, for honoring you through our Rotary Club. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you our newest uh, Paul Harris Fellow, Jerry Smith. Now I'd like to call on DJ Plunk, who's with Smith Funeral Home, and he's going to talk a little bit about Jerry's career at Smith Funeral Home. Uh, good afternoon, or yeah, it is afternoon. Uh, some of you know who I am, a lot of you don't, um, but I'm a funeral director with George A. Smith & Sons. I've been there just about 13 years now. 
Um, and Carolyn asked me to speak today kind of about Jerry's commitment to the funeral home and funeral service in Jackson and Madison County. George A. Smith and Sons began in 1930 by Jerry's father and former mayor of Jackson, George Arthur Smith. George took a loan of $1,000 and opened Smith Funeral Home in a small house on Baltimore Street. The next year, the funeral business was moved into the Edenton home at 438 East Main, where George and Elizabeth raised their family upstairs. In the 40s, George built the family home at 575 Campbell Street, where the family moved when Jerry and Jack were teenagers. Not too many years later, Jerry and Jack built the iconic twin houses on Lambeth Boulevard, where most of the Smith family was raised. Uh, here's another picture of the staff back in the day. Uh, the business continued to operate for almost 70 years at the Main Street location before the business offices were moved to the North Chapel, where we are today. At the height of the organization, it consisted of five funeral homes and two cemeteries. Uh, in September of this year, we celebrated 93 years, making George A. Smith & Sons one of Jackson's oldest continually operating businesses. It would be impossible to talk about Jerry's work at the funeral home without mentioning his twin brother, Jack. For over 60 years, Jerry and Jack were the sons of George A. Smith & Sons. For many years, we could count on either Jerry or Jack being at every funeral service we held, regardless of the location or time. And it has often been said that if you had George, Jerry, Jack, and Roger on a funeral service, that it was equivalent to high mass at the Catholic Church. <laughs> Jerry and Jack were instrumental in helping their father raise the bar to what funeral service could be in Jackson. They have taught us that with hard work, attention to detail, listening to the concerns of our families, and a no excuses attitude is the recipe for success. We lost Jack in December of 2020, and Jerry continues to be involved in the family business. He never fails to call me at the office every day between 8 and 8.30, and they will let the phone ring until I'm the one that picks it up, <laughs> for his evening report as to what happened the night before and to ask me what he needs to be involved in in that particular day. He is still involved, interested, and committed to the day-to-day -day operations of the business, despite him not physically being there every day. Jerry, we the staff of George A. Smith & Sons, thank you for your commitment to our business. You are an integral part of our family and we wish you a very happy birthday. Now I welcome, we welcome Roger to the, to the, to the microphone. Thank you, Larry. And Larry's last name is Smith. Uh, we're not blood related, but I do feel like you're part of the family. Larry's parents and my grandparents were best friends, and we've been in this church for our lifetimes anyway. Dad, your family's glad to be here to celebrate with you today. You know, on November the 1st, 1934, Elizabeth Robin Smith was relieved of the physical burden of carrying twins for nine months. <laughs> she birthed healthy twin boys, and her trouble had just begun. <laughs> Our grandfather, as it's mentioned by DJ, uh, George Arthur Smith, founded Smith Funeral Home in 1930 when he was 20 years old. And by age 24, he and my grandmother had three sons and they lived, as DJ mentioned, in a two bedroom, one bath apartment above the funeral home at 438 East Main Street. Money was tight, but they were, they were, uh, they were rich in love. And both of my father's grandfathers, my great grandfathers, were railroad men. Uh, they were hardworking men who uh, with our great grandmothers made for a loving and nurturing family uh, on both sides. And that had a, had a lot to do with uh, the upbringing of Jack and Jerry. 
and, Bob, and uh, their brother Bob. So uh, they were raised, Dad Jack and older brother Bob were raised in a loving family that did not spare the rod. How many rods did they wear out on you? <laughs> you would not believe the stories and tales that I have heard over the years about Jack and Jerry. <laughs> Hundreds of times I've heard the question, have you heard about the time Jack and Jerry did this or did that? How in the world did you make it to age 20, much less age 89, some of the things that I, that I heard that y'all were involved in? You know, I never heard about you and Jack being arrested, but I did hear about you being detained at the police uh, station on several occasions, and uh, that was a call that was a phone call that the mayor did not like receiving, but uh, anyway, again, the rod wasn't spared. In uh, 1948, the family moved out of the funeral home into their new home on Campbell Street, and Brother Bob soon left for college. It, the word is that the Jackson High School faculty uh, threw ethics out the window and made a pact to make sure that Jack and Jerry graduated on time <laughs> so that they could get some relief. <laughs> no matter what it took. Then it was off to Memphis State for Jack and Jerry, and after a year in Memphis, it was off to UT Knoxville, where Ruth Ann Barker of Trenton happened to be enrolled. And you know, in the 1950s, uh, when you were away at college, a lot of communication, especially if it was long distance, was by letter writing. You wrote a letter home, or your parents wrote you a letter. Did Jerry write his mother a letter? No. Guess who he did write a letter? No, he probably did at some point. But it was, it was uh, known that he also wrote a letter or two to his future mother-in-law in Trenton, Tennessee. Mrs. Roger Barker, 10th Street, Trenton, Tennessee. Dear Mrs. Barker, I hope this letter finds you well. Everything is going well here in Knoxville. I see Ruth Ann every now and then, and she seems to be doing fine. Sincerely, Jerry Smith. P.S. I see where, where Ruth Ann gets her good looks. <laughs> so my grandmother writes to her daughter, Dear Ruth Ann, I trust you are studying the appropriate amount of time to make good grades. When you can, make some time for that Jerry Smith from Jackson, Tennessee. Love, Mother. Well, the rest is history. My mother did make time for my dad, and they made a, a loving family and a wonderful home for my sisters and me. We lived on Lambeth uh, as backdoor neighbors, in fact, to my grandparents, uh, who lived on Campbell. My uh, Uncle Jack and Aunt Betty and their four daughters lived next door. They were my cousins, but more like my sisters, my other sisters. We sort of had a family compound there, uh, and my great-grandmother, lived up on the hill as well. Uh, we lived in what's now known as Lana, and my other sister, Judy, where's Judy? Oh, there you are. Is here today representing her side of the family honoring dad, so we're glad to have all of you here, as well as grandchildren and um, in-laws. So, growing up around the funeral business, as we did Judy and Carolyn and Jerry Ann, we, uh, we learned that just like what we think of as first responders, our dad and uncle and granddad were first responders in end of life situations. It was a 24 seven proposition. Our family events and holidays were subject to being changed or postponed due to other families needing the attention at their darkest hour. And we accepted that, that was just the way it was, that's the way we lived and didn't know anything different, really. And until I was about six years old, uh, our dad spent every other night away from home. He spent the night at the funeral home every other night because Smith Funeral Home also provided emergency ambulance service. Again, a 24-7 proposition. And you know, today's emergency vehicle drivers have pretty stringent safety standards. Uh, but uh, Jack and Jerry didn't know anything about that. 
They were the consummate ambulance drivers, and if you needed to get to the hospital fast, you wanted Jack or Jerry to be driving, because they would sure get you there. And again, I don't know how you live past age 30 with some of the close calls you had in those ambulances, but uh, you saved many a life, and I know it's sort of an oxymoron that you'd be in the life-saving business and in the funeral business, but the fact is you had the equipment in those days to transport people, and uh, whether they were alive or deceased. So, and by the way, Tina, uh, your predecessors at what is now Western Sea Healthcare changed my career path because I was devastated when the hospital took over the ambulance service. Uh, I had planned on following my father's uh, path as an ambulance driver. But, uh, and I, I, I was, I, it took me a long time to get over that. So. Seriously though, what I have admired about my father over the years is hard work and his dedication to excellence. It was modeled for him by his father and dad learned well. And then he modeled the same for me and, and for others who worked with us. Everything he and my family and staff do in funeral service is orchestrated so that the funeral will be as meaningful and precious to the surviving family as possible. And in the words of my grandfather, George Smith, whatever it takes. Dad has made his mark in other successful business ventures in the community, and he's also given of himself to other worthy causes and institutions, like this church, where he's belonged all of his life and now occupies the same seat on the same pew that his father occupied for nearly 80 years. And like this Rotary, uh, Rotary Club, which means so much to him, and you can tell that he loves the camaraderie of the club and each of you. 2023 has been a tough year for my dad and for our family as our matriarch went to heaven. But in her last months here, uh, our mother experienced excellent care from her loving caregiver, my dad. You remain here with us, dad, because the Lord is not finished with you yet. You have new knees and uh, you have more work. You have more work to do. So dad, on behalf of our family, I want to thank you for taking such good care of us. And we want to thank you for taking such good care of the hundreds of client families that you have served over the years. And lastly, we want to thank you for providing, uh, for proving that hard work, along with love and compassion and empathy for others, can make for a successful and fulfilling life. So W. Jerry Smith, Dad, this is your life. Mr. Roger, uh, I appreciate uh, all of you being here today. <laughs> this is just, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just, I just can't. I just think it's just happening. You know, it's, it's a planning, apparently, that went into this. <laughs> I just can't believe it. But all of you just mean so much to me. Families here, my staff here. Our Rotary Club's here, everybody's here, you know. And uh, it's meant so much to me to, to be able to, like I say, have two new knees to, <laughs> to continue as hard as it is sometimes to, to do it. But I'm determined, to, just like I've always been all of my life. Go, I got to go. <laughs> you know, November the 1st, it's all safe today. Oh, the Lord knew what he was doing when he <laughs> brought Jack and I here on November the 1st, because he knew we were going to need all the help we could get. <laughs> so anyway, I do thank my God for the opportunity of being here and giving me the strength to, to continue to carry on uh, for my business and for my family. Thank you so much. In case y'all are wondering, this was all put together professionally by the uh, Carolyn Vaughn Production Company. <laughs> and and we, 
everyone did a good job on their timing, so we have time. So we're going to do the historic Jerry Smith brag jar. The way this works, you put in some money and it goes for a charity. Who is it doing? The scholar for us. Okay, this goes for the scholarship fund for our junior Rotarians. And uh, so you put money in and then you can brag on something or someone or some event. All righty, here we go. And I see one right back there. Oh, yeah. oh, that'll work. <laughs> Thank God for another year of life. And, you know, I appreciate that so much. Thank you. We love to brag about it. We'll be here next year. The deal is you have to brag about daddy. You can't brag about you, your children, or you have to brag about my okay. daddy because this is about him today. Okay. So the first brag I have for dad is that uh, recently, this girl reached out to me on Facebook because um, I'm going to be Rotary present next year. So I was asking her and she attended a certain uh, seminar and she wrote back and she said, yes, you need to go. You need to attend this seminar because uh, let me tell you something. I'm president today because of your dad. She said uh, she's president of Rotary in Dixon, Tennessee. Angela Castrani, I think is her last name. Anyway, she said she went to visit you one day to interview at the funeral home. And I guess she didn't quite fit the mold, so you told her to go to Rotary. And so she got involved in Rotary, and she is president of Rotary today because of you. Jerry Smith has put up with more lame brain preachers like me <laughs> who have come to do funerals and didn't know what in the world they were going to do and he made sure they didn't fall in the grave he made sure they didn't put their foot in their mouth too many times jerry i've dealt with a lot of funeral directors you are a prince god bless you anybody else we need to build this fund for scholarships who's going to brag on daddy It's been mentioned, but I just want to emphasize what Jack and Jerry and their families have done for this church. One side story, I know the poor Smith family has heard this story so many times, they're tired of hearing it, but we, my wife and I moved here in June of uh, 95, and on Mother's Day of 96, we just hadn't made a decision. And my father, who had just lost our mother, his wife, was sitting with us. Well, as soon as the service was over, the Jack and Jerry Roadshow attacked him and told him how happy they were we were here and wished we joined the church and oh Jim you're amazing well all the way from here to where we ate lunch for Mother's Day all we could hear is I don't understand why you don't join that blank church I don't understand those people are amazing so Jack and Jerry have done so much but uh, and brought so many people in the church and I really appreciate our friendship, Jerry, and what you've done for this building and for the people in this building is amazing. So thank you so much. Thank you. Who else has a brag on Jerry? All right, Jerry. Thank you, Carolyn. I'd like to brag on Mr. Jerry Smith uh, for the early days in JC's when uh, he and Mr. Smith and Mayor Conker, we were in the early days of JC's and uh, certainly on their work with the Miss Tennessee pageant, they were always very welcoming, very supportive and much of my leadership skills and much of my achievement, I learned a lot of that in the early days of JC's and 4 So thank you, Mr. Smith. You've always been such a nice gentleman. I tell you that even though we didn't have that day, but congratulations and thank you for your support when those early days of Jackson JC's. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, and also I was, I am, I will while I'm still bragging, on Jerry, I was able to be named JC's Outstanding Young Educator and Man of the Year, he got it and his brother Jerry got it. So I thought I was in a very, and Mayor Conger got it. So I was in a very elite group of in, individuals to be named JC's Outstanding Young Man. Thank you very much. I think I saw a brag over here. Did I see a hand go up? All right. Thanks for being here, Carl. Uh, I'm Carl Kirkland. I had the good fortune to uh, live in my early time here in Jackson at 419 Wisdom, which happened to back up to Jack and Jerry's house. And 
also to Mayor Smith's house. So I got to know uh, all of you before you were born almost and, and have known you ever since and had uh, y'all babysit for my children and, and grew up and know, know all your family and we feel like we're part of you for, uh, for being there. And we had the advantage because we lived real close to have the original Santa Claus come to our house at, at Christmas time and he would knock on our window, on our front window, and our children would get so excited. And of course, you all know that the history of the, of the Smith family and the Santa Claus. And so, Jerry, your family has meant so much to me and, and to Alice and to all my children. And so we love all of you and thank you for being Jerry Smith. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Ron Kirkland. I have a brag, uh, and it involves Jerry. But Jerry, I'm just so glad you had the good sense to leave that other university and go to the outstanding institution, <laughs> the University of Tennessee. All right, Mr. Joe. I'd like to brag on Jerry. When I got really old <laughs> and couldn't drive the rotor anymore, well, Jerry would come by and pick me up, and that's how I got the rotor every day. Well, he didn't drive as fast as he did that ambulance when he was young. You put him you put on your seatbelt. You'll go to Adam. Thank you, Adam. Well, first off, happy birthday, Jerry, but I also wanted to uh, tell you a little truth. Uh, I'm usually running a little late when I come here, but uh, I was a little intimidated coming to your table because there was a few open seats and I thought I might have needed a few extra gray hairs to come over, but you welcomed me with, with open arms and thank you for letting me uh, sit down with you and eat lunch. Really enjoy it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Scott, here we go. Thank you. Hey, a couple of them, you know, I think back to a couple of years before I was born, 1971, and the, the Smith and the Conger family had a long relationship, but that was back when politics probably wasn't as dirty as it is now. Um, <laughs> and it was not uncommon during that race between George Smith and Bob Conger to see Jack and Jerry at the Conger headquarters, see it at the Smith headquarters. Uh, maintain the friendship through through politics, and that's important. And then fast forward to 2011, 24 hours a day. It's about 2:30 in the morning. My grandfather passed away, and Jack and Jerry showed up, suits on, three o'clock in the morning to receive him. And so, uh, always calls people on their birthday and checks on them. And uh, appreciate you and happy birthday. We still got some space. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, growing up in Jackson, I always heard of you and your family, and uh, it's got to know Roger, and we had uh, family together, grew up together. Um, then I got to know you professionally. I hate to say that as a doctor, but I got to know you professionally, because that doesn't sound good. <laughs> but unfortunately, that works that way. And then I got to know you as a friend, and uh, you have lived up to what I heard as a, uh, your reputation, and thank you for being a role model for Jackson, Tennessee. So, happy birthday. I see some money. Is that for me? Is that money for me? When I, we moved here, first guy that came around to see me was Carl. He said, we got a symphony and you're in the music. Help us. We're going to die if somebody doesn't start this music back up again. That's, we said, I said, okay, we'll do it. And I'm still here. So, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Jerry, when I, I came here 15 years ago, you were so welcoming me every time I came to church here or wherever I saw you. Unfortunately, a lot of times it was at funerals, but uh, you were always welcoming to me even uh, though I probably didn't show up but once a month at church, which I hate to admit, but I just really appreciate you and everything you do. You're the epitome of the community 
service that we uh, recognize here in Rotary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Tina. So just to echo a little bit of what others have said, I think it's your, your heart and your just your love for serving others that just immediately helps to put people at ease and make that connection with them. And so I just want to thank you for that, that heart for service. And it's evident in everything you do, from your work life to your family life to the things that we do as a, as a club. So thank you for just being Jerry Smith and showing us an example and setting life goals for us all. I've said many times that, you know, you're setting life goals for us and how to live our lives with a heart of service. Thank you. Mary, thank you. I, just a short one. And, and this, when I think of Jerry Smith, all my, I've known Jerry all my life. Uh, Jerry, you are a true gentleman. She brought the tennis shoes. Okay, Lori. Mr. Jerry, I, I, I could spend a half an hour up here thanking you for all the ways that you have demonstrated beautiful things for all of us. I especially am grateful for your investment in South Jackson and for the relationships that that built and for all of the many times that you and your team have supported my family through really dark, traumatic experiences. You're a blessing and I thank you and I love you. Frank? Mine's an hour you. I don't care, buddy. <laughs> Jerry, I grew up in Columbia, Tennessee. Frank Sowell, the owner of Oaks and Nichols Funeral Home, was the most loved and respected person. Moved to Jackson <clears throat> and got to know Jerry Smith and found out that Jerry Smith was the Frank Sowell of Jackson. One of the most respected businesses, one of the most respected people. We're privileged to have you serving on our board of trustees for eight years. Proud to be a friend of yours, and I thank you for a very treasured silver dollar that you gave me that was from your dad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. Okay, Russ. For years, Mr. Smith, you've told me to call you Jerry. For years, I've continued to call you Mr. Smith as a sign of reverence and appreciation for all you've done for this community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Don. This is not a brag, but it's a story. Somebody mentioned uh, how Jerry had volunteered for many, many other things. We had a clinic for a short period of time that took care of us established to take care of people who did not have insurance. And one of our goals was to try to encourage people to come there instead of using the emergency group as a general medicine clinic. So we set up a table and a door to a uh, doorway of the emergency room for uh, volunteers to man uh, three or four mornings a week. Jerry and Jonas Kisber volunteered to do that uh, one or two mornings a week. So they would set up at the table and uh, read the newspaper and Jonas would work the crossword puzzle. And uh, one day uh, these people came rushing in the door with a man who looked pretty sick and uh, Jonas turned to Jerry and said, Jerry, said, put that paper up over your face. You scare those people to death if they think they've already called the undertaker. <laughs> there are a lot more stories like that. Okay. Thank y'all so much for bragging on Jerry Smith today. He's a wonderful father, a wonderful grandfather and just a wonderful friend to so many and thanks for being here it means so much to him it means so much to our family it means a lot to his staff who, who really know daddy intimately know him well and how hard he works and he really does have a heart of service and that's what rotary is all about we're so proud of you thank you
today will definitely go to, down in history as one of the best Jackson Rotary Club meetings. So memorable and special, and we are so thankful to have had you all with us today to share in the joy of um, Jerry's birth date, and we're so glad that y'all could be here. 